Hey guys, this is JBND and D from Power Up uh, Gamers. First, I'm free. Thanks to be hey, coming back to you with a, another video. It's been a while. I have my good uh, friend, Citizen 130X, on YouTube here with, with me. Hey, hey, Modi, been long time storyteller, DM. One of the best I've ever sat under, so. Uh, we at Power Up Gamers have been considering doing like a week long series of workshop ops where we do a video like this. We'll give exercises later on on, on different topics and then in the evenings we'll play our games and be waiting to what we learned that day. So I thought, what better way, since I'm on vacation, I get to see my buddy, than to kick it off with talking about storytelling. Hey, a lot of players, a lot of DMs ask questions and about this. I've seen it in session, out of session, just over and over. So we're going to cover some of it. But before we do, I'm going to let Modi kind of introduce himself, tell a little bit about him, how he got started with a and D and D, some of his own experiences. Modi, close yours. Okay. I started playing D&D when I was 11 years old, which was a while ago. Yeah, it's real. Um, pretty much because my parents told me not to. And when I started playing, I found out that the game itself is an amazing story engine based on probability fields. Being somewhat of a math nerd and um, a complete fantasy novel addict, how could I say no? But like most of us, I'm sure. I started really DMing when I was 12. And, um... <laughs> what? You can guess my real age. <laughs> Just so you guys know, I'm still guessing. Um... Storytelling. D&D. &D. Characters are the heart of any story. If the characters are not interesting, no one will care about a story. What makes characters interesting is how they change in response to different aspects or stimuli within the story. Characters don't change are boring. Okay. Stories are about the characters. Good stories really work on two questions, who and why. And this, by pursuing these two questions, it's pretty, I wouldn't say easy, but it sets you on the right track towards multiple branches of backstories, because often why includes another who. Um, the great thing about D&D and any one die 20 based role-playing game is that where and when and what isn't as important as who and why. And good DMs never say no. <laughs> I will give you impossible odds, but I will not say no because that's funneling. And the unique thing about telling stories with Dungeons and Dragons or any role-playing game system is that nobody knows what's going to happen in the next session. I don't know if I'm DMing. Players don't know. It's not a setup that's fun. That's not storytelling. Um, 
third time applies to D and D when you're talking about backstories. Backstories relate to alignment. Alignments can change, and alignments are everything. And why are characters this way in the story? There's a reason. There's not just a ranger or an orc. There's a reason that the ranger and the orc are out there. They have names. They were born, hopefully. I don't know. It's a fantasy world. But storytelling is the same. Who and why. What, where, and when. Is secondary. Yeah. Yes, I definitely agree those are secondary. We're not saying they're not important to some degree. It, it, it adds a lot to the who, who, and why. But the who and the why is the green. Same sort of thing. Well, when I say they're secondary, I don't intend to diminish their importance. I'm saying that the who and why is the core. Okay. The what, where, and when is to be a little creative. Well, it's all creative, but you know, the who and why is the cake. The what, where, and when is definitely the process. Now, uh, one thing, thing I've seen asked a lot is how, how do you tell a winter end a story? Or an arc? Because technically that's what it is in D&D. &D. It's, it's a story arc. They have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Well, see, every character is a story. The overall story is the story of all the characters, but every character has its individual story, motives, and they have reasons for those motives because of what they've been through. Up to the writer or the player or the storyteller to decide. But characters do things for a reason. And those reasons are more often than not based in past experience and future hopes. Usually, for me, what I'll do is, is when a player comes to a campaign, they I have something prepped for them, and whether it's fighting Tiamat or a demon, rather, and after that, fighting is done. Or however, I planned it. Usually, usually, where you go on track in the long run, they may twist and turn to get there. But uh, once that's done, I ask. I'll just sit and ask the players, do they feel like the story's done? Okay. Well, we're talking about Dungeons and Dragons, a role playing game. Role yeah, that was hard because the story never really ends. As long as the players and dungeon masters show up to roll the story, the story will never end. I but the story will not. And if, as a DM, you need to introduce another character into the story, who is this character and why? Now, the rest is up to you. Um, and, and that's kind of what I do with Stu. If we're finishing one off, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll make that important to the next story. Whether it's something the characters did, someone they met, 
Uh, and then I use that as kind of the beginning of the method. So yeah. overall, it's just a continuous survey. The overall survey arcs. And that looks really good. The people do get confused on when is it the end of that arc. No. When? How, where, these are important, but they're details, but they do affect who and why. And in a role-playing game that's based on a one die 20 system probability, it's the die that really decide how or when or what. So, in D&D, &D, there's what I call micro-actions. But a good DM isn't obsessed with the die. You don't need to know how many stones are in the temple. <laughs> don't fall into the trap of over-description. And don't be a sesquipedalian. If you don't know what that is, look it up. If you know what it is, you probably are one. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely agree. Some people do do too much in descriptions. And it's enough, for example, you go into a ruined temple, there's debris on the floor, you can hear the stone skid everything as you walk up across the chamber. You don't need to know where uh, each pile of stones are. Let the Players imagine it. Yeah. And let them act. Number one, stories are about imagination. If we're, stuck, if we're talking about <laughs> fantasy stories, your imagination is limited only by your imagination. And, you know, that's kind of cool. Nobody gets hurt in an imaginary story, and yet, stories change the world. So, and that's part of why I wanted to kick this off with a little bit on storytelling, and besides uh, the fact of being a Jeremy teller, this world is a story. And it's still being told. So, of course, all of life is. Everyone watching this, your life, is a story. Who? That's what makes the story interesting, because it's the same questions we're all trying to answer in our lives. Who are we? And why? I like think that's a really good introduction for uh, storytelling thing. And it's just kind of the basics of what it really is. Well, there's one more thing about it. It's really fun. <laughs> it is. Oh, it's a blast. It is. It is. Uh, there's nothing like sitting in, in a session where everyone's on the same page. Age telling it a great like a story. story engine. The DM doesn't run the game. Well, running the game is not controlling the game. I rephrase that. The DM does not control the game. Everyone is subservient to the almighty one die twenty system, <laughs> including the DM. Because yeah. if you're DMing and you actually know what's going to happen, you're going to be bored with the story. And if the DM is bored with the story, don't yeah, expect your players, players to stick around. Be bored. Yeah. But it's a cooperative storytelling experience, and it can be done online, but the best is, you know, on a table. It, yeah, I, I miss our, our round the table all session. Online's cool. I'm having a lot of fun with it, but it's just 
there's nothing like hanging out with your friends. So, oh, 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 my, other agents again, there's man's imagination and um, lifelong friends. Oh, that definitely. They never become closer than family. What do you win for playing? Stories and camaraderie. A good time. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, we got rid of while after Bill, and we're not doing this public because I have some stuff I'm going to add on to it, such as a few exercises. Is it, etc. Okay. Why we got time? Hey, Molly, why don't you tell oh, some of, of, of the cool stories we've had and some of the sessions we've done there? And A long time ago, an island was peaceful in the Western Ocean. A young child was born. He was a kind child. He was respectful to his parents, who were farmers. But he preferred to keep his own company. He didn't hang out with others that much. He spent a lot of time by himself. When he was around 60 years old, he was walking around one summer evening and he found a shell which was beautiful and he listened carefully and a voice came out of the shell and it said the most beautiful things and it sang to him and he picked up the shell and he put it in his pocket and took it home and hid it under his mattress tell anyone about it and he stopped going out to the beach he stopped doing anything besides the chores he had to he finished his morning chores go back to his room grab the shell and hold it to his ear and listen to his, the sound and words of wisdom and the music coming from the shell. That fall, all the crops in the island failed. This has never happened before, except for the family of this child. Their crops did twice as well. Of course, this is going to breed suspicion. Yeah, suspicion always starts with jealousy, doesn't it? That's some of the why. So the uh, local priest of Pavor, lawful kid, God bless him, he's lawful kid. He's been crusaders for long, good, right? Wouldn't be a story about those. And he says to the, the village, comes to him, says, what is happening? This has never happened. Our crops are failing. Um, we can't explain it. Can you? And this priest of Paylor, who's been in the order you know, born to um, very connected to light and discovery of that which is dark. This is eyes. And he says to the townsfolk, follow me. And he walks straight where this child is in his bedroom listening to the seashell. And he insists on entering. And the parents have to because it's, you know, the priest. <coughs> and why would you prevent him? 
attention, especially if you didn't really know where to get these up to. Um, priests came in, followed by the townspeople, and straight to the bedroom door. A child had barricaded with a couple of crates, but they usually broke through that. I looked up in horror at the priest, grabbed the shell, and ran out the window, climbed through it. He's only six, very nimble. Um, not in as good a shape as he was before he found the shell, but still pretty nimble. I'd say what, deck 16? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, the, the, um, the stats tell a story too. Anyway, um, very fast runner and runs to the sea because the shell told him to. When he arrives at the place where he found the shell in the first place, okay, well, don't phrase things like that. When he arrives to the location where he found the shell those four long months ago, he sees a beautiful woman, looks to be about mid 20s, long, long hair, eyes as blue as the sea. very welcoming smile. And she says to him, swim to me and I will keep you safe for I am the one who gave you the shell. So he does. And the townsfolk arrive on the beach just in time to see him and this woman in her long white road which is where the seawater but somehow her hair was not it took him and now this island is called the island of nightmares that thing lives there Who was this woman? What was the shell? Why did she take the boy? And yes, we have answers for those. Yeah, yeah. But that no, no spoilers. No, spoilers yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> that is still one of the best as campaign eight starts I had. Okay, I'll give you a little spoiler. It's a very sad story and it doesn't end well. And in D D land, it's not over yet. But, um, but yeah, it, characters. They look awesome. Yeah, well, I'm not. I'm actually telling the whole story. I'll shorten it here. I invented a king named Ardell, who was so paranoid about assassination that he made his own twin sons his wine tasters make up any story about that you want there you go the fact that yet it's not our to do story for like some people think just look at the world around you oh it's yeah <laughs> real life is wonderful for Surviving on things, movies, work. How could hell be any worse? <laughs> but, but, but yeah, I definitely appreciate Monday taking time to it, but that's why I, I, I would but sir, on the case. pleasure is all mine. <laughs> it <laughs> is. Gotta it's my. Gotta <laughs> we got to fight now. Yeah, they had that play yet. We're gonna have to step outside because voice acting that's a whole other thing entirely now, isn't it? But I yeah. can't do it. I, I wish. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, if you want long wet beard, you have to be patient. 
Yeah. What's it good for? It's good for fighting close quarters when they grab it. <laughs> but yeah, it is definitely was a pleasure talking with his mother again, hanging out, uh, having a good I'm time. Not, I'm not a real fight. <laughs> um, it look like what was happened. <laughs> Seriously, would you guys cut a beard like this off? Uh, oh, uh, no. Uh, uh, we have some guys with really nice beards in our community. Yeah, you squint, I look like a storm cloud with a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. But yeah, there's really not a lot to the basics of storytelling. It's just no, the answer to who am I is really much of it. Yeah, you want to wire to use the There's something question with DMs and players and things like that. But that you have to find what's right for you Unless and your the players. story makes the reader or participant ask this one question: What happens next? It's not that good of a story. Yeah. Oh, it, it's been a, a pleasure. I hope you guys in this all quick chat, and we'll see you next time on Power Up Gamers. And until then, may the dice always roll in your favor. Hi, you guys. Guys, welcome back to Power Up Gamers. I'm German D and D. Hey, hey, and now we get into some of the fun stuff. Uh, I want everyone to pause this video right now. Grab paper, pen, pull up a Google document, and blank. However, you want on to record. Or information because now we are going to put some of the tips on storytelling that we've given you into practice. And I'll wait a minute for everyone to do that. Okay, so now that you've got your preferred method of recording information in, on it, we, uh, uh, we are going to I out, out a few things. Right. things. The first is that we have a little girl uh, running through a cornfield towards her house. Else, else, she sees a dark shadow. Now, I'll be real bad. I want you guys to write out who this little girl is, why she's running, and what you think this dark shadow might be. Pretty simple, right? I, and it can be anything. Let your imaginations go wild. Wild. Okay, now that you've got the oaths written down, I want you to go back, 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 back to your answers. Whatever they are, whether it's an airship, she saw the shadow of a dragon flying overhead, whether it was some kind of monster or that she was afraid of, whatever the case is. Below that, I want you to write a couple keywords. 
on what this scene is. It's as far as a theme. Is it a horror or theme? Is the little girl scared and running in fear? Is a happy scene in is she excited because the shadow might be some kind of airship that is bringing a carnival or some other awesome thing? <coughs> Whatever you feel this scene is to you, just write down a couple words that describe kind of the theme and mood you want. Is it happy? Gloomy, dark, over, uh, excited, meh, things of that nature. Now that you got that at done, and let's dive into a little bit more of why. I, the girl, is running to the house. Who is in the house? House. Is it her family? Is it perhaps a mentor or a teacher? It, is it a, even a house? House. Could it be a meeting place? Could it be a church or temple that the little girl belongs to. These are things for you to decide. I took up a nice little sturdy. So take a moment and bite down your response as to who's in the house, house or building and, and why the little girl would be running the uh, Obviously, if she's running to some, something and she expects either to hide there or uh, to be able to get help, help there, uh, to inform somebody of what's going on, something of that nature. So now that you got that done, um, we'll dive into another little section and you can write it to one side either or again below what you've already written. How you set your page up is really up to you. Oh, so this little bit will be about the dark shot at all. Well, we've already said what it was as up above. Uh, so look at your answer on what it was, then decide why is it there. Uh, if it's a dragon, is it attacking because it's hungry? If it's an airship, is that a expected route out or are they crashing because of the trouble. Whatever element you think will make your story cool. Oh. And this is really what we mean by the who and why is being important. And yes, there's a little bit of what ha is happening and where it's happening. But it's really the who and the why that brings these stories to life. So why is the shadow there uh, at that particular time? Uh, and you'll write down your answer, whatever it might be. And this is kind of the middle of what we would call a story arc. arc. Even though it's one scene, we're just doing a one scene quick story arc. <coughs> so
So now that you've figured out what the shadow is, why it's there, who the little girl is, why she's running to this building, and what would do the third part of an arc, which is typically a, the closing in arc. arc. So the little girl has gotten to the building and, and has gone inside. I, we're gonna uh, begin off with what the little girl does. Did she talk to someone? Did she go to hide? Hide, etc. Now, if she interacts with someone else, you begin this process kind of over with the new person or new character. Who are they? Why are they in that building? And, and, and why would they listen to or help the, a little girl? Oh. Oh. Th then, then you kind of shift the, the scene to them coming outside to deal with the shadow. Wherever you said it, it was in your little story. Hey. What? Let's begin with it. it. How do they react? To the shadow, are they scared? And are they happy, excited, and and why? I is there some local legend, and is this a yearly tradition, and such as a theater troupe traveling round might make a yearly stop in a village and it's a big deal and there's usually a festival or a feast things of that nature so you write I, that down and that's basically a an exercise in how to tell a story a, you or simply ask these questions on pretty much every element in, in, in your scene. You could even ask, ask why but is she in this field for the little girl? Oh, oh, was she out there playing? Was she working? Was she sneaking off to meet e e a, f a friend? And that her family didn't like. I was she gathering herbs, whatever. Ever. Uh, the elements themselves individually aren't as important as as what you come up with overall. <coughs> And the reason I say that is because if you take one element, like the field, field and you have just the field, field, there's nobody in the field, nothing happens, then it's not an important element. It's when all these different elements come together uh, that make, make up the story. So I hope you've enjoyed this, this exercise and I look forward to reading what uh, the creative minds of, of the community is that I belong to have come up with. It, and I hope you've enjoyed this, this video oh, oh, for a little oh, thing we're doing. It's kind of like a almost a week long semi-convention type thing where we release is 
kind of a workshop video like this is this in the morning and then in the evening we'll play games that kind of focus on this this so oh oh later this evening after this is post posted on the channel or as public it will be running a game that really focuses on on these two questions of who and why I, I, and how they affect the story, whether that may be the focus, may be the player's characters, it may be the situation they're in, but they're really going to uh, try to hit and explain the who and the what I aspects of, of this particular session. So until next time, may the dice always roll in your favor.